Hi, I'm Chad with Purple Collar Life. In today's video, we're going to talk about cutting, splitting, stacking, and supplying your own firewood versus just buying firewood from somebody else. I've done a lot of thinking about this lately. I made a spreadsheet that I'll talk to you about. I want to say right here up front, if you're trying to convince your spouse to let you buy firewood and equipment by saying it's going to save you a lot of money, maybe you watch the video first before you watch it with them so you can see how it turns out. Let me tell you what I've been thinking about buying versus cutting firewood. Most of us started out just like this. There's no shame in that game. So if you started out like this, you're not alone. But the average homeowner who uses a wood stove or a fire burning stove goes through three to six cords a year. So the rest of this video, we're gonna take that average 4.5 cords a year and we're gonna talk about kind of the ROI of cutting, splitting, and stacking your own firewood from the least expensive method to the extravagant method versus going out and buying cord, seasoned, hardwood, firewood from someone else who's producing it. So let's assume four and a half cords a year, you do the minimum investment into making your own firewood, you're going to need PPE, which I know I put off way too long. It's not that expensive, like $150, so worthwhile investment. You're probably going to want a chainsaw. This is the Steel MS271 Farm Boss. You could do a little bit smaller than that if you're just getting started, but I think this is a really good chainsaw for the homeowner who's cutting their own firewood. You're going to at least need something like a wheelbarrow, so the chainsaw is going to set you back somewhere around $400, maybe a little bit less for a smaller one. Wheelbarrow is going to be about $120. Or if you've got a garden tractor or a lawn tractor, maybe you spend $150 on a cart like this so that you can move that split wood around. And yes, you can split using them all, but that gets tiring pretty quick. It's good exercise, but it's not the most efficient method. So you're probably going to look for a used log splitter for around $750. So what got me thinking about this was someone's comment in a previous video where I said, you know, if you have woods like us, you can get your firewood for free. And several people commented, it's not actually free, it's time, it's the equipment, it's the fuel. And yes, that's absolutely true. If you're processing your own firewood, creating, cutting, splitting, stacking your own firewood versus buying it. So this is the minimum setup, I'd say. I don't have the used splitter here, but Imagine a, a used Husky or some type of a box store splitter that you picked up used. So you can see in the spreadsheet column here to the side, I'm calling this minimum setup, total investment, $1,420. Around here, seasoned firewood is about $300 a cord right now. Um, so purchasing four and a half cords would cost $1,350. So your payoff in years using this setup, one year, you would have paid off that investment of the equipment. That was your chainsaw, your PPE, wheelbarrow, or a little trailer, used splitter. And so that's not bad. In one year, have paid off this equipment by using your own firewood versus buying it. Now let's say you don't live in the woods. You're buying a log truck worth of firewood. So if you get purchased wood logs, four and a half cords, that's gonna cost you about $637. So your total investment then is $2,057 and your payoff in years is 1.52. So a year and a half, you're paying off that investment. Now again, if you're talking buying it from someone else, you're not spending your time, you're not using gas, oil, maintaining this equipment, but I enjoy cutting firewood. So for me, that's part of the factor also. Again, this is the minimum setup. Let's talk about the medium setup. So this is stage two. Sometimes this is a progression. You go from stage one to stage two. Sometimes you start out right here, the medium investment to at home firewood supply. So in this one, you still have your chainsaw PPE, $150, chainsaw $400, 
In this example, maybe you bought a brand new box store splitter. That sets you back about $1,500. Maybe you got yourself a used quad like this Honda Foreman or a Polaris Sportsman 500, something like that. Price range will vary, but somewhere around five or $6,000. You probably got a used utility trailer, so it's something a little bit bigger than this little 15 cubic foot lawn cart. Something you can tow behind you and haul a little bit more firewood as you're cutting, splitting, and stacking, hauling it out of the wood. And then you probably want skids or tarps to stack the wood on a little bit more efficiently, cover it up, let it season a little bit better. So as you can see here in the chart for medium, that is all gonna cost you $7,700. Again, if you purchased four and a half cords for one year, that'd be 1350. So your payoff in years for this setup, for your own firewood, 5.7 years. You can see, it's getting a little bit more expensive to provide your own firewood uh, when you start investing in more equipment. So 5.7 years to pay that off. If you don't have woods and you have to buy that log truck of firewood poles, your payoff in years goes up to 6.17 years to pay off this investment. Let's go another step higher. Now in this example in the chart, I'm calling this the high investment to at home firewood collection, splitting, stacking, and storing. Uh, in this example, you've still got the PPE. Your chainsaw is a little bit upgraded. Maybe you want to choose the MS261 or something more on the professional level. Um, for that, you're going to pay a little bit more. That's $630. Instead of a used box store splitter, maybe you get something that's light commercial or heavy duty residential, like our Split Fire 2265, which we love. That's gonna cost you somewhere around $3,000, $3,500. And then in this high investment category is where you really step up. You're probably gonna get yourself a tractor with a front end loader, something maybe a little bit bigger than our John Deere 2210 because you probably wanna use pallet forks and IBC totes to move the firewood around a little bit better. Um, so that, let's say you find a used tractor somewhere between $15,000 and $20,000, set of forks for $800, and then IBC totes, maybe you want to start out with 10 and you're able to find them for $25 a piece. I made a video about how I find them for $10 a piece, but the average price is much higher than that. Let's say 19,000 for a tractor, 800 for your pallet fork set, and $250 for 10 IBC totes. That total is just over $20,000, $20,050. So if you would have bought that firewood that you've produced, four and a half cords after buying all this stuff, um, the payoff is 14.8 years. So for 14.8 years, you can use all this and break even providing your own firewood versus buying it. You know, this is all just a hypothetical example. If you buy yourself a tractor like this, you're gonna use it for a lot more than firewooding. You know that uh, a compact tractor or a subcompact tractor or a utility tractor has many uses. I use mine all the time for a lot of things other than firewooding. But again, this example is just if you bought this stuff just to firewood for your own use. Another example is if you are selling firewood, that's an entirely different story because your ROI is going up greatly. You're selling that firewood rather than uh, just using it for your own personal heat, but you're also gonna be producing a lot more firewood, taking a lot more time, using a lot more fuel, diesel, chainsaw maintenance, etc. The next level we're gonna talk about is what I call in the chart extravagant. And we know some firewood producers who sell firewood that have this type of setup. But if you were gonna do it for yourself just to burn it, this is crazy payoff time. So extravagant, you still got the PPE. You still got a chainsaw, but you probably want the best of the best. You got yourself a steel 500i, the fuel injected chainsaw. That's gonna set you back $1,430. You probably got a commercial log splitter. So that's gonna be like the Easton Made Axis, uh, the Easton Made Ultra, the Wolf Ridge, Pro 28, those type of log splitters are gonna cost you somewhere around $7,000. Okay, you still probably wanna use the IBC totes. That is a great method for storing and stacking firewood. So you'll probably get a set of forks, again, about $800. IBC totes, let's say you start with 10, $250. You're probably gonna get one of those brand new Rural King RK37 tractors or a Coyote CK3510SE. Uh, 
uh, cab model with grapple. You want to be able to grab those logs in the woods, haul them out here, cut them up. That's going to be about $30,000. You know, if you're going to do this, you better do it right. Get ourselves a wood shed so that that wood's protected from the elements, can season a little bit better, let the air go through it. Let's say you spend $2,000 on uh, like a 20 by 20. You're going to make it yourself wood shed. And then if you're going to talk about moving a lot of firewood, maybe you want a dump trailer. Could be to pick up firewood out of the woods. Could be uh, you've got tree trimmers that are dropping loads off at your house and you need to get it back to where you're cutting and splitting it. So a dump trailer is somewhere around $11,000. So again, this is the extravagant setup. All of that investment, $43,000. If you had purchased four and a half cords, $13.50. So you do that math, that division, 31.8 years to pay off your investment in your firewooding equipment. Once again, this is just an example of if you bought all that equipment just for firewood, we know that you'd use all that stuff for a lot more than firewood. For example, if I had a dump trailer, I would be bringing gravel into my driveway and keeping it a lot better maintained like Mike Morgan does, because if you can haul it yourself, that's a lot of the expense around here. We live in a very rural area. So if you buy gravel and it has to come in, the gravel itself isn't that expensive, but the hauling at so many miles, 22 tons to get here, um, that's, well, that's where the cost really adds up. So lots more uses for all that equipment, but I'm just giving you this basic example of if you use these things, what the payoffs would be. So again, minimum payoff in one year, medium payoff in five years, high range payoff in almost 15 years, and extravagant payoff in 31 years. So a couple things we didn't talk about is the enjoyment, the family time together. Jennifer and I split a lot of the wood together. We're out in the woods cutting the wood together. So that's a lot of good quality time spending with someone. Um, it is enjoyable, it is good exercise. So there's a lot of advantages to cutting your own firewood. Um, we find it rewarding and enjoyable, and I think a lot of other people do. But if you're talking about it just from an economics standpoint, and you're only burning four and a half cords a year, uh, which is probably about what we burn, somewhere around five cords a year is what I'm guessing we burn. We don't really keep track because we've always just cut, split, and stacked firewood, burned it as we need it, and we never really measured that wood to see how many cords we were going through in a winter time. We're trying to do that this year to get a better idea of exactly what we burn in one winter. But if you can keep your system simple, absolutely that payoff is pretty quick. If you're looking at it just from a dollars and cents standpoint. But once you start adding equipment, um, unless you're selling firewood, you might be better off to just buy that firewood from someone else. Especially this time of year, if it's not something you enjoy, you're out here in the cold. I like being warmed up in the cold by doing firewood, but if this isn't your cup of tea, definitely economically, it might make sense to just buy the firewood from someone who's making it. If you think about the time it takes to put in all this effort to make your own firewood, again, if you're not enjoying it, uh, it's probably not time well spent and the investment might be better to just buy it from someone who's making it and selling it. If you can find someone who does a good job seasoning and splitting really good firewood that, that is efficient to burn in your particular wood stove. But if you're like Jennifer McKenzie and I and thousands of others and you just enjoy being outside, taking advantage of the property that you have, playing on tractors, using chainsaws, running log splitters, if that is enjoyable to you, it doesn't matter what the investment costs, it's well worth it. So it really depends on what you're expecting from that investment. For us, we enjoy having all these tools, uh, some would call them toys, here on our property. Making firewood is just one of many ways that we use the tractor. Uh, if I could find a task that would put me on the tractor every single night, I'd be on it every night. So hopefully you enjoyed this video about the economics of cutting your own firewood versus buying from someone else. For me, the investment is all about the enjoyment I get being here in the outdoors. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, click that subscribe button, and we'll see you again the next time.